Let's start graphing our Ozark. The first thing we want to do is maybe readjust our graph. So I'm going to take this, drag it to the side so I can write my letters over here. Now, you don't have to write them over on the side there. You could write them directly in the center. That's up to you. I just like to have them in my first quadrant. So the first part of Ozark is the O. The first equation we said we were going to use is an quadratic equation. So that is a y equals x to the second power. So we get our nice little u curve. I want to move this base over to about here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this a little bit, put the x in parentheses, and I'm going to subtract by 3 to move it over 3 units. And then I want to move it up. I'll move it up to about 2. So x minus 3, parentheses 2, plus 2. Remember, every single time that you write something in the equation, your line will disappear. Don't worry. When you finish writing your equation, the line will pop up. If the line hasn't popped up, that means check your equation. You might have accidentally wrote something in there that shouldn't be in there, or you haven't finished your equation. Now, this curve is a little wide. In order to stretch it out, in order to make this a little bit longer, I'm going to put a 2 in front, so it makes it a little bit narrower. Now, that's all well and good, but I don't want these two ends. I want to cut them off, so we're going to put a constraint on them, and we're going to do it via the domain. Oh, that didn't help. But remember, I wrote an x, and it disappeared. That's because I'm not done yet. So we're going to set the lower bound to about the 2 mark. And to keep things symmetric, I'm going to stop at the 4 mark. So I'm going to go from 2 all the way to 4. So that gives me the bottom of my O. That wasn't too bad. But now we have to create these square root functions. So that's y equals x um, to the 1 half power. Or you can write sqrt, and it will write the square root symbol for you. So that's x. First, I want to take this bottom and move it right there. So I'd have to move 2 to the right, so x minus 2, and then up 4. Oops, up by 4. But this curve kind of doesn't work. I need it to be a little bit taller. So remember, stretching. So maybe if we stretch it the same amount as we did the last equation, it might work. So put a 2 in front. Oh, look, that looks pretty good. Now we need to constrain it. Actually, let's wait on that. So let's look at the other. So y equals square root. And I want it to start here at that point. So that's 4 over 4 up. So x minus 4 and plus 4. So that moved it over. But I don't want it in that direction. I want it in the opposite direction. So let's play. Let's, what happens if I put a negative in front? Uh, not the right direction. What happens if I put it in front of the x? It kind of disappeared. Ah. Reason that happened is because we did not put the entire thing in parentheses. So we need to make sure we do that. Put a 2 in front. And look, we got it raised. It looks exactly the same. Now, here's a really, really cool trick. If you don't know where your value meets to, cl uh, to close your initial or your letter, you can hold your mouse over top of the black dot. It will tell you exactly where they intersect. So they intersect at 3. That's where I want to put my constraint. So for the blue equation, I'm going to have the constraint of 3. Now, I don't have to set it from 2 to 3. I can. I don't have to. So if I set it between 2 to 3, Oops, 2 to 3. That's what I'm going to get. But remember, it's a square root function. It's already constrained at the 2. So for the other one, all I would have to write is x is greater than or equal to 3. Either way is completely OK. It constrains your initial, and it constrains your equation. It's fine. So that's how you would do O.